Hello everyone, I'm going to show you how to set up your GL init router. And before starting, if this video helps, please support me. I donate half of all donations to shelters. You can find more details in the description below. First, turn on the router. Take the power adapter. Plug the power adapter into an outlet and connect the other end into the router. When the router is powered on, the light will turn on. It may take a few minutes for it to completely turn on. Next, connect the cable from your internet provider or from your modem to the internet port. This port is often labeled WAN and typically has a unique color. Each cable should be inserted until there is a click. You now need to reset the router to its factory settings. Press and hold the router's reset button for 10 seconds. Wait for the indicator lights on the router to begin flashing. Sometimes, this button is located inside the router casing to prevent accidental presses. In this case, use a thin object to press it down. The router will restart and all the settings will be reset to the original factory defaults. Plug one end of the Ethernet cable supplied with the router into an Ethernet port. Plug the other end of the cable into your computer's Ethernet port. Please wait a few minutes for connection. The router is connected to your computer. Now you will need to set it up. But first, I'll show you another way to connect the router if you don't have an Ethernet cable or your computer doesn't have an Ethernet port. Connect the router to the power source and plug in the cable from your internet provider. This will enable Wi-Fi. If your router is new, your Wi-Fi network name will be the name of the router. Your router has its own Wi-Fi network name and password printed on a label. Connect to it. Great, you've connected to the router. Now let's start setting it up. That first, open your browser and go to the link you see on the screen. Make sure to type the address directly into the browser's address bar, not the search bar. If you see a login page asking for a password, it means your router has already been configured. Ask the person who previously set up the router for the password. If you're unable to get it, you'll need to reset the router to its factory default settings. After that, try accessing the router's admin panel again. Depending on the firmware version of your router, the setup process may look slightly different. But don't worry, just follow along with the general steps I describe, and you'll be fine. On the first page, you will need to select the router's language. I'll leave it in English. Click the Next button to proceed. On the next page, you'll be asked to set an admin password for your router. Your admin password will be used to configure everything inside the admin panel. It is extremely important to keep this password safe and private. Make sure your password is between 5 and 32 characters long. Click the Submit button to continue. Now it's time to choose your internet connection type. This information can usually be found in your internet provider's contract or welcome documents. Click on the Modify button to open the options. From the drop-down list, choose the correct connection type for your network. Again, this should match what your internet provider has given you. If you're unsure which one to choose, 
select this default option. It's the most commonly used. Click the apply button to save your selection. Now let's change the name and password of your Wi-Fi network. From the menu, click on wireless. Then on the wireless page, click the modify button. In this field, enter the new name for your Wi-Fi network. In the next field, enter your new password. The Wi-Fi password must be between 8 and 64 characters long. Click the Apply button to save your new network name and password. If you are connected to the router via Wi-Fi, you'll now need to reconnect using the updated network name and password. This also applies to the 5 GHz network if you're using both bands. After updating the 5 GHz settings, don't forget to click Apply again. By the way, if you don't need one of the two bands, for example, if you only want to use 5 GHz, you can disable the other one. To turn off the 2.4 GHz network, simply click this switch here. Wait around 10 seconds for the change to apply. To re-enable it, click the switch again, and wait another 10 seconds. The same steps apply if you want to disable or re-enable the 5 GHz network. Once you've finished making all your changes, it's time to reboot the router. Click the Reboot button. Then confirm your choice by clicking Yes. The router reboot will take about one minute. During this time, please do not refresh the page or press any buttons. If you were connected via Wi-Fi, you'll need to reconnect after the router finishes restarting. Now check if the internet is working. Just open your browser and try Googling something. If you still don't have internet access, you may need to try cloning your MAC address. To do this, log into the router's admin panel again using your new password. Navigate to the More Settings tab. Then click on Mac Clone from the menu. On this page, select the option from the drop-down menu that includes the word clone in parentheses. Your Mac address may look different from mine, and that's completely fine. Click the Apply button to save this setting. Now restart the router one more time. Wait for about one minute while the router reboots. If you were connected via Wi-Fi, you'll need to reconnect after the router finishes restarting. Once it's back online, check if the internet is working. Again, just try searching something on Google. If it still doesn't work at this point, it's time to contact your internet service provider. They will let you know the exact connection type required and provide any additional settings or login credentials if needed. That's all. If my video was useful, please support my work. I donate half of all donations to shelters. You can find more details in the description below.